I don't see that many people in their collection that have a thief. Because look, I a lot of people think. would feel comfortable wearing a Luftwaffe watch, perhaps. It's not a Luftwaffe. You just described it. it Disagree. Just for the fact that what you attacked me. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. You just said it was fantastic. It's beautiful, but I wouldn't say it's a. No, no, yeah, yeah. I think that would too. Really but if you're gonna pay ten grand more, just because it's on the other gold, then probably just get it on steel and then paint it or something. You pass your season. Bring it to the paint shop. Welcome to episode four. So, in today's conversation, we are going to be looking at watches. Yes, design. Underrated. Underrated, underrated design. Underrated. So, what is a what is a overrated design icon? I think some things that come to mind would be a Rolex Submariner. It could be a like an Audemars Piguet. It could to even be a certain extent like a, a Swatch watch, right? So, we want to find. What are some design icons that actually are completely underrated? Mm. That people are kind of forgetting when they're thinking about making their their, their Christmas lists, or they're forgetting when they're making like a, a ranking of what are the most iconic watches of all time. What are some designs that are kind of passed under the radar, but we've noticed and we hope become more rated as time goes on, or we quite enjoy the fact that they're underrated so that you know maybe their prices are a bit easier and they're a bit more unique. I think uh, we should start with first a, a wristwatch check. Yeah. Do you want to start? So today, this will be matching mm. with the other design icons that we're going to talk about. But I've got a Flieger from Fortis here. Fabulous. Which is a really nice piece. Mm. Uh, I got really new resources recently. And actually, if you see the insignia on the top, you see the uh, emblem of the Red Arrows. Oh, I thought you were going to do something much weirder than that. But anyway, so it's, I think it's a really nice piece. I just got it recently and I'm very happy with it. So that's it, really. Stunning watch. Absolutely love that watch. Uh, today I've got uh, my Mont Blanc 7 uh, 002 um, chronograph. Um, uh, now, for my, uh, these guys are known for, as you know, making pens. I know I'm going to keep this short, guys, but wow. Um, you know, these. this is an absolutely superb watch. Um, a wonderful, a wonderful design, a wonderful design elements. Here we are. Keep it up, keep it up, keep it up, keep it up. Keep it up. Um, we've had this on your, um, uh, I think, uh, time uh, grapher. Um, uh, which which uh, it's been worn quite a lot. It's had this on a time graph, and uh, you know we looked at the beats, and this was like it was looked like it's dead. It was flat. I mean, this time so keeping on this is superb, and I find changing the time really easy. Uh, but you know, this is part of the Richemont Group, who um, of course got really big names like Long and Son um, and IWC. Uh, so they've made a really really tremendous watch. I just mm -hmm. love the elements that you just uh, just give you that miser struck um, and that little notes from the fabulous Mont Blanc pen. Mm. Yeah. My favorite part of that is the I think it's the crown. I love no, no, no. The I love the the I think crowns are like one of the spaces where you can really do something. Won't do much. No, the crowns don't really do much with the crown. But when a when a watch nice one they do. When a watch does, like the watch I'm gonna show now, uh See, I, I think it's worth it. So because today's episode is about underrated icons, uh, this isn't as much an icon, but I think it's an underrated watch within the collection. So this is a this is the Christopher Ward watch that has five days power reserve i don't believe it's still on the website i think it's off mm. but it's got the sh21 movement which i'll unveil right now it is i think genuinely the reason why i feel comfortable just buying quartz watches or watches with just a very basic solita movement is because i have this this baby right here wow. is the reason why i don't feel compelled to spend a lot of money on buying a watch because honestly it will be hard to get something in the same you know, the price uh, value value for hard to beat yeah, absolutely unbelievable movement. And I got it at something like uh, two thirds, if not half of the price I found on eBay. Mm -hmm. And I'm wearing it on a tight strap just because I wanted to, to make it a little bit more casual. Thank you. I love the simplicity. Just that just that, that design element is perfect for this episode. Just blue hands, mm -hmm. white background. It's really very simple, simple. Very it's understated. It's very, um, but so stylish as well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 12 to 6 also numerals are very Bauhaus esque. Uh, and I, dream, I just love it. That's very really cool. So, Elliot, what is for an my... underrated design icon, in your opinion? For my opinion, I didn't go with a specific, I mean, it's kind of specific watch, but I went kind of a genre in some sense. It, it's some icons, some types of watches that you don't really see that much, and it's not the popular ones like the Samaritan and stuff. So, I'm going to talk about the war. <laughs> <laughs> okay. During the Second World War, for the Luftwaffe, basically, they started creating watches called the BUF. Basically, and these were watches that they needed for the bombers to basically synchronize the times of where they were to drop them. 
not the most fun I'm history not like in this direction <laughs> but oh, no. this is a type a video of league and these were absolutely fantastic and i think that's a design icon because of you see so many watches nowadays that are linked to this you've got iwc which is the majority mm -hmm. of the thing and all the aviation watches come from there this these were 55 millimeters wide because they were using uh pocket watches movements it's got a nice onion crown uh so it could be used uh, for with gloves when you're flying as the typical arrow on top triangle to show you the top of the dial where it is i don't know why really that's needed when you can see the numbers but anyway and they started with this and these are really fantastic they really long straps so you can just put it all around your job suit and stuff and i think this is a design icon and this kind of links with the watch i'm wearing here because you get a lot of the fliegers and a lot of the pilot's watches that it comes from this era. It um, comes from... You can see the influence in that in so many. Thank, so, so, so many. Thank very, very famous. For, for so many things. famous watches. So, uh, one, I'm not going to thank them this life for much. <laughs> and two, this isn't underrated. This, this is, is underrated. This is so rate. I mean, IWC, most IWCs are just this. The Mark 10, Mark 12, the, and all this. It's not underrated. It is. I think it's you overrated. See, oh, no, I, don't I know. think it's an overrated design. I think so many brands try to do this. I think Laco is an example of one. I just get a little bit bored. I'm sorry, but this is my first strike. <laughs> this is, I think, the the you. not an underrated design. I think, I think it. it's a rated design, overrated design. I don't think it's. I put this on the. Overrated I don't part. see that many people in their collection that have a Flieger. Because not a lot of people be. would feel comfortable wearing a Luftwaffe watch, perhaps. It's not a Luftwaffe. You just described it. It's, yes, that's where it comes from originally. But now, look, this is Swiss. It was damn good scrap, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you going to be censored for more of this. So, uh, okay, so you're not happy. I don't think that's going like to go for today. Really. Go ahead, go. Uh, try again. What's you, what else you got? No, let's switch. Yeah, go for it. You go. You go for it. All oh, right, okay. Each one of us can get. Can Each get. one of us can get. Let's, let's take see, a bit uh, Mickey out of it. Let's take the first one out of this little bag. And uh, I've got what I think is an absolutely underrated no. design no. hero. Here we go. Um, this is the mundane. Um, which is uh, clearly the official Swiss railway clock, obviously renowned for uh, doing that. This one's the Gattardo uh, 2016, and it's a quartz, so relatively inexpensive. Love that little M on the top there. Um, and uh, this is just that design icon, that big sort of red uh, uh, second hand, you know, they're really, really thick and pronounced. Um, and you know that that's really there. Uh, you know what's quite interesting is you know, this case was uh, made from the uh, door of the um, uh, actual train itself, well, oh, the no. old lady. Oh, um, oh, wow. So that's really quite interesting. And when did you learn all this? The straps on, on the colours. I read the- You bought this like four I years. I read the leaflet in the book. Um, <laughs> just now, um, you know, if you're ending, that is for me is a real yeah. stated design icon. And actually, if you go to any, if you're actually in Switzerland, you go to any train station. That, that is the switch, but that is a switch but button. Fair enough, and many other train stations, you see that as well. You go to Italy and you see similar designs. Ooh, with Alan Anza said. So it's, yeah, um, fair enough. Um, did you know, if you go to a, a Swiss train station, they're all going to stop at that top mark and they'll take a little bit more time and then they continue. Yeah. And that's because they all need to synchronize all at the same time, which is why they would use it because they were so accurate. But when I went there, I genuinely asked one of the, one of the staff members yeah. on, the, the, on the station, what, why isn't it ticking properly at this point? And they explained to me the history. And oh, yeah. It's really cool. Um, yeah, I'll give it to you. I yeah. think this is, this is an underrated design. I've seen some people wear it, definitely, out in the wild, but I still think it's... But not that much, yeah. It is. I agree with it. I'm doing it. So, Max? It is going to be tough to beat, then. Time to contest you. Okay. So, I've picked something that actually you might be wearing right now, <laughs> in a weird way. So, this is my pick for the underrated design icon. Now, I do mean design, because I do think that the pricing of it is slightly unfair. I think there needs to be a little bit of work on this. And what I'm going to be showing the you fun. guys yes. is the Mont Blanc 1858. Mm. So Mont Blanc acquired in 2007 uh, the, the Minerva uh, group, and the Minerva group just produced the most exquisite movements I think I've ever seen. Mm. And they produce two types of watches. They produce watches that are Sorry. a little bit more limited edition, like these ones, mm -hmm. that go for £30,000 and above. And then they produce these ones, which are relatively more affordable for £5,000. But you can honestly buy them pre-owned for £2,000. Because they don't retain their value. Because this is where I think more people to do a little yeah, bit of work. For two grand. You can, I found this one for 2.2, 2.3. I'm going to buy it. Unreal. Unreal. Scandal and honestly, 
Why wouldn't you want to get yeah, a watch gorgeous. that is really gorgeous. a chronograph that's a lot of busher? It's interesting. Yeah, the push. cathedral hands. And let me just show you that. And this isn't for this one. So the one that's let worth lesser is just a Salita yeah. watch. That again, the Montblanc website will tell you is their special watch. But you check on Watchbase, which is a, a website awesome. to check on the, the, the reality of what a watch movement is. I highly recommend it. Just a Salita. But tell me this is a... It's gorgeous. I mean... Wow. Unreal. I mean, is it an icon? Look at the romance of, of an automatic, the, the, the train, the cogs. It's just oh, not automatic. Sorry, yeah. the manual wind. So manual wind. The, the romance of the cogs and the thing, that's just stunning. Absolutely. It's beautiful. So, and they've designed it with certain true. aspects. Like you can see that they've like, put an arrow, which yes. is also just, like, no. Yes. There's, there's no reason to have that there, but it's just very nice. It's beautiful. Wow. It's beautiful it's, finishing. It's disgustingly beautiful. And again, I think the main problem is pricing because they need to make a watch that is more affordable. And I think if it was, good luck trying to convince someone to buy uh, perhaps a, a Tudor rather than a Mont Blanc. If they yeah. can get their prices right, if they can be a direct competitor, I think these designs are even better. They're inspired. They're based on their heritage. Just truly fabulous watches, but underrated? I don't know. Have you ever heard of them? Was this a design icon? So uh, I disagree with it. Just for the fact that you attacked me. You attacked me. So, uh... <laughs> that doesn't make sense. You just said it was yeah. fantastic. It's beautiful, but I wouldn't say it's a bad design. They do great pens as well. They're gorgeous. I think that's a design like I think yeah, I think this, this whole 1858. I don't think it actually made a trend for anyone else. Le earlier models. Just because I don't like your Luftwaffe watch. Yeah, well, that's what you get. It's <laughs> supposed to attack me, and that's what you get. I thought to actually attack him. Yeah, no. But okay. Serious. Okay, fair enough. Okay. I'll leave it there. Take him on. Elliot, my turn again? Yeah, yeah. So I'm, let's see, I'm going to be bashed again for my choices again. I'm picking a genre here. You're going to say it's overused everywhere, but it is. But still, <laughs> but I think it's underrated. So basically, the World Timer was created by Louis Cotier, if I say it correctly, and he did it in 1931. His dad was a watchmaker, so of course he had no choice back in those days. If your dad was a watchmaker, you had to be a watchmaker. Mm. That's how it was. So... Uh, him and his dad used to try to solve loads of that stuff. They were doing automatron watches and and one problem Louis Cotier was trying to solve was the world timer. And in 1931 he made the Earth Universelle, which is world timer, basically. And that's where he created it. And he worked mainly on popular watches at the beginning because they were quite larger and so they were much easier to do. But then he worked with I don't know what you've Patek Philippe. Okay. He worked with Patek Philippe to start doing uh to start miniaturizing his movements and putting them in, in uh, small things. So I can't tell you the model row references. It's like 55 HU or whatever it is. But uh, these were the the very start of World Time Watches and was just created nowadays. So I think it's still underrated. There's still in people's connection you have them. But I mean, look at that. It's just beautiful. You have a hammer. And so the basically selling price of that watch. What, nowadays? I've got no idea. That's probably like 20 quid back in the day. But which, which one are you talking about? Are you just talking about all World Time Watches? Or specifically these models? Uh, let's say specifically this model, because this one is quite an oddly shaped, to be honest. But I'm just taking it in general, World Time. So but the genre, the genre, yeah, yeah, World Time. The, the genre, World Time. And actually, I've got a piece recently. A Patek Philippe? No, not a Patek Philippe, my <laughs> age. Just for the sake of this video, only for this video, of course. Uh, for world timers. So actually, and this works with what you were wearing. Okay. This is the uh, Christopher World. No. Christopher World, world, world timer. So uh, it's, uh, super. this I just got recently. It's absolutely amazing, and how the the watch works is really really cool. So you have the the world times up there on the outer. You set the inner chapter ring, and basically you see there's this orange little stream line. Yeah. Which basically you can, if I do it the right way, you can move it around the dial. Ah, oh, you cheeky. You can set mm. language. And you can set it to whatever country you're going to. And it makes it a bit more visible to see. And yeah, that's it. You've been out of that for quite a while. Yeah, I've been off the standing quite a while. It does look a bit like the Quit Award show, but um, uh, you have what? the <laughs> Crystal Award show. Um, but stunning. Yeah. Absolutely when did you stunning win? watch. Um, and they do some amazing pieces. Come. That's very really cool. good. Yeah. So there you go. That's my underrated design. Put that on, on a on a like 
Oh, it's blue bracelet. Yeah, it normally blue comes works on blue, but I didn't get it with a blue bracelet. But I want it. So Christmas is here coming. So you know what we were talking about? Hey, it's funny you don't have a Christopher Ward in your collection yet. I do. Now you do. Now we all do. Uh, now we all do. Really? Look at that. That's my. Uh... We need to stop spending money. So we're all wasting well, money on the same things, at least. Yeah, exactly. Okay, well, the genre, I'll give it to you, is underrated. Thank you. I, I don't think you've presented a watch that's an underrated icon, but I think you've presented an icon that's a yeah. like a, a genre of icon. Yeah. What about? So let's see if I can pull off the second icon. Okay. Second design icon. So here we are. We have here the clock two. Yeah, um, uh, quartz. This is the pure black W39. Um, and, uh, you know, well, they're used to making clocks. Now, I think we need to show this um, particularly on the camera. But this is the froggy version. It comes up in French. But as you click the item, it tells you, Il est deux heures vingt. Uh, it's 2.20. Um, and so I think that is a really, really fabulous kind of design piece and, and clearly comes to life, um, uh, although you can see it quite clearly during the day, but that really comes to life in the evening uh, when someone asks you the time and you just press the button and just those letters on the front yeah, edge it give you, gives you that, um, gives you, that um, uh, you know, time in wording, which I think is a lovely, unique touch. It is super mm. unique. And it's basically, the, the only brand I've ever seen do something really that different mm. where you... You've now changed the way of telling time mm. to a digital format and in writing form. I mean, when have you seen a watch put in right? I've seen dials where they write the numerals. So you have one of the watches where they say un, deux, trois, mm. and it's actually written. But to write about that, that is pretty iconic. And they make uh, how, much is crop? how much does it cost? Uh, they're around 600 pounds. So, so wait, what? bit expensive. Wait, that's 600 pounds? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, new, new is 600 pounds. Which is also you can, expensive. New is 600 pounds. Uh, again, um, if you're the great scavenger on eBay um, and you're really hunting around, you know, you can get two. You, can, you get two to three, two to three. Yeah, you can, you can get them, them cheap quite, around quite, the set. Uh, quite easy. Well, okay. But it is quite expensive. That's, expensive. that's the one more expensive than I thought. Yeah. And I'm going to present a watch that's like 10, 100 times that price. But, <laughs> yeah, come on. You but, can watch as a full round. I, I know there's no competition, but I think you're winning this. I mean, those yeah, are two watches that are genuinely very iconic. That so feels silly, though, because the other watch I bought is another one that's a bit un unobtainable. But I still think it's something that's worth discussing. When we think about Cartier, throw me Cartier watches. Tank. Cartier Tank. Santos. 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 Dumont. Santos Dumont. What else? It kind of stops there, right? You've got that Tank. Names. You've got Santos. Maybe you've Crash. Mm -hmm. But it, it, yeah. it kind of... American. French. Yeah, types of tanks, like American. But it, it stops there. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a lot of design, like genuine. Why I love Cartier is not for their movements. I don't love them for, uh, you know, their, their, their PR and their marketing. And their, but what I love them for is the, the genuine design they have and they bring to the watch world. Have you ever heard of the Cartier Tortue? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the Cartier Tortue, so the Cartier Turtle, is my pick for an underrated design icon. And if I'm honest, this is taking the best principles from the Cartier tank in terms of wearability. The same design principles of the, 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 the Cartier Santos in terms of having a case that's a bit interesting. And uh, it's a model pusher chronograph. So that's my second one for the day. They're so cool. So cool. And this, actually interestingly enough, was developed uh, in 1998. Mm -hmm. And it was developed by three people. It was Yanni Holter. Dennis Flagelet that uh, became the founder of the Bitune and Jose Podron. They're the ones that essentially started, and I wrote it here, THA Ibosh, and they're the ones that did these movements. Uh, the caliber's called the 045 MC for any nerd out there like us. And yes, it is expensive. It is 30,000. But this is because this is a yellow gold reference. Yeah. And if you're going to spend a crazy amount on a, do they do in a luxury watch, uh, I'm going to say yes. You have no idea? No idea. Oh, okay. Uh, I love it. I think on the yellow gold is the best. Oh, yeah. Thing. Having that with two really... But if you're going to pay 10 grand more, just because it's on yellow gold. They'll probably just get it on steel and then paint it or something. <laughs> yeah. That's just Caesar. Bring it to the paint shop. Yeah, yeah, that's right. pretty good. So, yeah, I think in, on the affordable side, these two watches are for sure are interesting. They are very underrated. I think in terms of a genre, you're totally right. I think the world time is an underrated genre. Uh, and then... I think when we're talking about high horology... Yeah, those are some pieces that are underrated, for sure. You don't see them that often in the wild. Exactly. Yeah. Interesting. So I think other than the, you know, uh, the...
what you brought. <laughs> We're pretty much like the affiliation is not to that, but anyway. Anyways, who wants to wrap this up? Any last thoughts? No. A any last thoughts? Uh, uh, any last thoughts? Any last thoughts? Please like, please subscribe, please add comments, please ask these guys questions. And it's goodbye from me, and it's goodbye from Max. That's him, man. That's him. All right, see you. Awesome, guys. Good one. Very much, Maybe. Stop.